Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Jacques Hingson Compton, and today we're going to talk about the role of the Youth Department in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. And with me is Director of the Department of Youth, Mary Wilfred. Uh, thank you for, sh for being on the show. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Hingson Compton. I am honored to be here this afternoon. I thank you for that. So uh, let us start off with the, the role and importance of your department, the Department of Youth. Okay, so it's the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, and there are two divisions, the Division of Sports and the Division of Youth. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently serving as the Director of the Division of Youth. Um, this division emerged in 2017, January mm -hmm. 2017. There was a, a cabinet decision to split um, between youth and sports mm -hmm. because previous to that we had a youth and sports director. Mm. And so in an effort to place um, more effort or concentrated effort on youth development, the decision was made to split the two. So yes. when, when you say youth, what age range are you talking about? Um, our, our new youth policy has marked 16 to 29 as the, the target for, for, for young people, um, which is in, you know, CARICOM, some major international organizations, that would be the age range as, as well. Um, however, while that is the target, we still have programs for um, that would target below 16, or mm. we can have programs that move as high as 35. Yeah, but that is the that is the the band. That the is band, right. Yeah, 16 to 29. So, yes. uh, I mean, could you also talk about your your role as the um, as the director of youth? What what exactly is your your day to day like? Okay, so my role as the director of youth is to ensure that there are appropriate programs implemented in the communities that would benefit young people mm -hmm. um, to ensure that um, youth development remains grassroots mm -hmm. like bottom-up approach rather than you know a top-down approach where we decide what young people want and so with the implementation of the Youth Workers Program, we mm -hmm. have about 22 young people in communities who are serving as um, field, field workers. Mm -hmm. And so they bring, you, you know, they uh, um, um, report the needs of young people because communities are different. Some communities mm -hmm. are, you know, more into culture, some are more into music different different right. communities have different needs and they would pass that on to us and we would respond um by through through the appropriate programs so i, I do want to get into the the needs of youth that you mm -hmm. do address but other than the the staff that you just mentioned what other sort of staff do you have what is their day-to-day -day like um we also have well the youth workers are supervised by um youth officers mm -hmm. so that would be um the, the their role would be to ensure that these youth workers are going are, are doing their work as planned they are being effectively um, supervised, monitored, and evaluated, and also they would be like the liaison at the office in terms of resources and technical support mm -hmm. for the programs that would be going on in the communities. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the issues that affect youth that you sort of hinted at a little mm -hmm. earlier. I imagine there are a lot. Could you just talk about what you do have to deal with? Is it things like youth unemployment? Yes, that sort of thing? yes. Um, there is youth um, unemployment. Um, there is also, um, there's a lot of psychosocial issues mm -hmm. um, that, that are affecting young people. Um, there is uh, youth 
looking for opportunities to be, you know, to be able to excel in the skills and the, and the talents that, that they have. There is homeless youth. Mm -hmm. Young people are without a, 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 a safe, mm -hmm. you know, dwelling. Um, you also have um, young people who have been probably, you know, they've dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. They don't have the required minimum qualifications, you know, in the CXC mm -hmm. to be able to um, get into decent employment. So you have these young people that you now have to navigate and lead them to training programs, you know, to in order to enhance their skills. So they, 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 there's quite a lot of, uh, and young people looking for ways to express mm -hmm. their, 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 their own talents, you know, so they're looking for dance groups, mm -hmm. they're looking for, for um, 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 singing groups, they're looking for, for, for organizations and clubs in their communities where they can express those things as well. So with the, the challenges comes opportunities as well. So you make, the, a youth worker may have a camp mm -hmm. and the young people in a community might say, you know, miss, we really think that we want a dance club in our community. So you now have to put the, the wheels in motion. Who's going mm -hmm. to teach you? Where are you going to train? After you've, you know, been training, where are you going to perform? So you now begin to put those wheels in motion because the young people are saying we are ready, we love mm -hmm. to dance. And so you now have maybe 10, 12, 15 young people engage in something that they love and that thing may take them to, you know, we never know where that skill right. or that talent may take them to. So this is what we want to um, continue to do in the communities. The young people express the need and mm -hmm. we work with them with, with, with that need. So how do you just communicate to them solely through the, the youth officers? Um, the communication is done in the communities through the youth workers. Mm -hmm. Youth workers would report to their officers mm -hmm. that there is a need and then we meet with the appropriate stakeholders mm -hmm. and decide, okay, this is what we can do with the resources that we have. So how, how exactly do you go about facilitating any of the, let's say, the singing groups or the, or the youth groups? Um, okay, so the youth groups are often, um, youth groups or youth clubs are part of the Youth and Sports Council in the communities. Mm -hmm. So if a youth group is probably, let's say a youth group is having an election or mm -hmm. they've just changed the executive, there are some things that they would want from us. They would ask whether they can get training. Yeah, they can ask whether their constitution is robust enough and mm -hmm. what is it that can be done to, you know, um, um, ensure that the, 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 the constitution is, 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 is written well and they, and, and they are able to work from it. They can also invite us to supervise their elections to ensure that, you know, the democracy is, 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 been, is, is been practiced um, um, well. And so we would give support for that. So we can ask you to, we can invite you to a meeting, look at your constitution, and discuss with you some of the areas that you may need to, um, you may need to improve. So it's a lot of engagement, mm -hmm. whether it's virtual or physical, in order to help these young people move from one, one level to another. Okay, yes. you, you mentioned something a while ago that I do want to address after the mm. break because we're due for our first break. Uh, it was what you mentioned about youth homelessness. I, I, find, yes. I, I think that's something that we need to talk about as soon as we come back from okay. the break. Yeah. You're watching Issues and Answers. We'll be back in a moment. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Kite mou dou bagay chans. Depi mou fet, PS moun pa jame counseling. Mali Glacia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband. And we spent over an hour on the cell. Ça c'est counseling. Mon quoi c'est ça fait mon. Just think about it, Glass. When you're having difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Hmm. When your situation qui bien oui, et moi besoin professional counseling. Mais mani l'argent. Et chez à condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh. 
Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit ASAP. Because I want professional. Did you say free? Free counseling. Boy Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468 2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I am your host, Jacques Kingston Compton, and we're here today with Director of Youth, Mary Wilfred. Uh, before, now, before we went on the break, I noted that I wanted to speak to you about youth homelessness. Okay. Um, yes, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it's an issue that we've stumbled on. Um, there needs to be um, more data collected on it, but there is a lot of social displacement taking place in the society. Mm -hmm. And I think young people are part of that because they form a very large um, part of our, of our society. So you have young people, um, well, there's a young man who loves a particular sport um, who told me that he doesn't have a place to live. Mm -hmm. And I began to inquire, you know, why, why was that? And where do you stay? And how are you able to, you know, how are you coping? Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was an issue of being socially displaced, not having grown up with uh, his parents and, you know, just not in a in in a in a secure dwelling having to depend on friends mm -hmm. or you know sleep under people's houses right. so this is an area we've um we've noted and we would want to um see what it is that we can do in order to respond mm -hmm. because one of the things young people um would applaud any ministry for is for responsiveness. Right. We must be able to respond to the needs. We can't be out there saying we are here to help you. And when the need comes up, you know, we um, cannot respond. So it may need, it may have to have a, con we may have to have a conversation with, you know, national housing, right. with equity. It's really a collaboration because the Ministry of Youth cannot do it alone well, yes. we have to be able to collaborate with other p other agencies and address that issue but we s we're still in early stages in mm. uh, right now it's anecdotal we don't have right. you know the, any research yeah any research but it, it it really piqued our interest in terms of let's see what's happening with our young people mm. and this issue of homelessness because yeah. it, it's it's not to me at least not a surprise that there would be youth that are uh, uh, homeless. Mm -hmm. um, is it a case where they have to reach out to you um, in, in cases like that? The youth who are... Uh, yeah, I, I, I think um, they did not reach out, but in having a conversation, I understood, mm -hmm. you know, because you mu if, if, if you engage in certain things, you must ask for, you know, where's your passport, if right. you're traveling, documents that, uh, that, that, that seem very normal to everybody, yeah, yeah. and then you know, this is here, this is there. So, yes, it's 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 something that it's a social um, it's a social problem that we have to begin to address and not not let it not let it grow or mm -hmm. let not let it exacerbate. But because I think even during this pandemic, with many losing jobs and you know that sudden mm -hmm. unemployment unable to pay rent, unable, mm. so even that too right. may, may, um, may, may cause uh, a further, um, further homelessness. So it is a, a, a need for us to begin to, as we, as we move on to look at the impact of the pandemic on young people, perhaps that is an area that we would need to capture. Yeah. Um, so what, what, can, what sort of age range do you think that that particular ill would span. Do you, do you have you any examples of maybe school age children? Um, no, this this young man had just left school. Okay. Yeah, this young man had just left school. Mm. Okay, and you you noted you noted earlier that you, at least in the future, plan to collaborate with departments like social equity. Is oh, that yes. is that something that you have done before? Yes, you have we've done. Yes, 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 we do collaborate on. 
on um, uh, many VAD projects, projects mm. through the Ministry of Equity where we were part of. We had the um, youth empowerment um, project. We've had, yes, we've collaborated before. Mm -hmm. So, because um, we serve in, you know, we serve in, mm -hmm. <laughs> we serve in communities exactly. and we need to partner with one another so we can be more effective in impacting um, our people um, positively. Yeah. Uh, can you also speak in a little more detail about some of the programs you have to encourage youth into something positive. I know you've mentioned your, the organizations you start to encourage them to sing, to mm -hmm. dance, or what, what have you. Okay, so we have, um, I want to start off by um, sharing on the virtual counseling program. Mm -hmm. We do provide psychosocial support for our young people. This program emerged out of the pandemic when we right. sent out, you know, we had some consultations and we were asking young people, what would be the most pressing issue for them um, during the, the pandemic? Mm -hmm. And they mentioned that that is an issue. They, um, they had lots of anxiety over CXC, lots mm -hmm. of anxiety about going to university. What then? What happens? You know, my parents have lost their jobs. What mm -hmm. do we do? So we, ni we initiated that program and um, it's been well received. Mm -hmm. Many of our young people are being helped um, in that program. We also have a music and arts program that is um, coordinated by Mrs. Um, Shelly Ann Cyril Mayers. Um, Shelly Ann is a well-known vocalist in, mm -hmm. in St. Lucia and she, um, uh, the 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 aim of, of of that program is to discover talent very early, um, so that these young people can be now, um, they can channel, you know, they can be channeled into into singing groups and they can be, you know, they can be that 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 star and that mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that mm -hmm. that that um, vocalist or. Mm -hmm. or or, or whatever they want to do, if it's composing or right. singing um, or whatever. So lots of work started at the school um, where we, where um, Mrs. Mayers had been helping with um, the music teachers and um, mm. her, her first thing was the chorale, big groups and students, children singing in parts. Mm -hmm. But that, that of course took a, a, a back seat because school right. was out. And um, we've also been involved in video production for independence. Mm -hmm. We're now working on a quail production. We have young people writing the script, and they would be the ones who will be engaged in, okay. in, in, um, in this film. So we, we, we try to um, target young people with many different skills. So you'd have the writers, you'd have the actors, you yes. have the directors, mm -hmm. and Yes, so okay. that is going on even as we speak. And you have put, because film is, is a passion of mine, yes. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you have people who train mm. them in these areas? Actually, um, before the pandemic, we did quite a bit of training in film. Mm -hmm. That was done by uh, Mr. Colin Weeks. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so we invited young people in different parts of the island, actually, to you know, come in to receive the training, and the training was well received mm. by both um, male and female. And um, you know, not long after that, we into this in, into this pandemic where mm. everything is has to be video um, filmed, exactly, and yeah. you know. So I think we we um, <laughs> well, we did well in that. We mm. were able to. Um, get these young people involved in that because even now as we speak the Babono secondary we had a build program back with international leadership development where young people are trained to become volunteers and these young people have been trained in that very filmmaking mm. and they now have the club and right. they've made certain um, um, ads for COVID and you know encouraging young people to keep the protocols and mm -hmm. that sort of a thing. So this is this is where we want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we know that the demand is there right. for young people to, to, if you have a film workshop, young people are going to turn up. 
Okay, and yeah. just briefly before we go on to our final break, um, for anyone who wants to get into these programs, wh who do they contact? Okay, so um, the they can contact one, their youth worker in their community, mm -hmm. or they can come to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. We are located on Miku Street, mm -hmm. opposite Access, upstairs Hangton, and they can ask for um, Mr. Nixon Barry, mm -hmm. or they can ask for Miss Mary Wilfred, Mr. Nyron Taliam, Miss Keisha Mongru, our receptionist. Any of these names would um, they would have been directed to the to the youth division. Okay, perfect. Yes. So, so please come visit us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So we're due for our final and second break. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. Oi, you realize you step on my toe? Well, do something about it. Uh. Gasai, burst in the man. Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hold on. and if my things start to take you, Hold on. no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold if a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hold on. We don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, right. respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other, don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, a message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Keeping hands clean is important for good health. However, after a disaster, staying clean is hard to do, especially if there is no pipe borne water. Simple things you can do to stay clean and remain healthy are wash your hands with soap and clean water. If these are not available, sanitizers with alcohol are options. Wash your hands many times during the day, before preparing food, eating, caring for a sick person or baby, treating a cut, wound, or sore. Wash hands after using the bathroom, changing diapers, caring for animals, caring for sick or injured persons, after handling garbage. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent illness. For further information, contact the Bureau of Health Education at telephone number 468-5349. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jacques Kingston Compton, and we're speaking with the Director of Youth, Mary Wilfred. And so, yes, so we're talking about a lot about the role of the, uh, of the Department mm -hmm. of Youth in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Now, we've spoken a lot about how COVID has affected the youth, but what about your work in particular, your department in particular? How, is, how has it changed how they tackle their own work? Okay, so the, the, what has happened is that it has um, placed us more in the virtual space. Mm -hmm. um, so there is provision for all youth and sports organizations to use our Zoom account for their meetings. Mm -hmm. Right, but before they would call and book our conference room for meetings, mm -hmm. and so it was a, a a good avenue to get to know who are the leaders. But now we 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 reducing the face to face interactions, and so we telling the uh, we 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 saying to youth and sports organizations there may be a cost to the Zoom conferencing call, mm -hmm. we can give you access to ours. So you'll be able to meet your members. Mm -hmm. So we can meet them, and they can also meet their members. So quite a number of organizations have held their elections, mm -hmm. they've held their meetings mm -hmm. through, um, through our Zoom platform. We, we want to um, really initiate a virtual development, uh, you virtual development um, um, area mm -hmm. where we um we're planning to have um a forum where young people can come and discuss hot topics that mm. affect them mm -hmm. um that will be run by young people it will be programmed by them and so giving them a voice to speak out is important to us and so we want to offer that that would be one of the new things that COVID has allowed us um, mm -hmm. to do. We also want to um, look at a place where young people in art and, 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 and sculpting and painting, there's a place where people can see what they are doing, young people, 
uh, because before you had to go to the town hall to see paintings mm. and you know these kinds of things right. but now that is not being done we we planning or we thinking of giving them that kind of space mm -hmm. a place where you can um, look at St. Lucia and Trivia so young people are now tasked to look at so what is happening in St. Lucia that somebody can go online you know as you go on Facebook the trivia concerning rivers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. capitals and things mm -hmm. we want um, we want that for us because young people are saying, hey, we're not, you're not teaching us enough heritage. We don't right. know enough of our, our heritage. When Creole Month comes, there's a big, you know, splash. Right. But then we don't know our heritage. So we're thinking of that tri trivia on our heritage. So um, we've been, we've tasked them to do that, um, do that work for us. So we have a, a, a bank of questions where you can just... Um, look it up and see what mm -hmm. you know about your, your heritage. So these are some of the ways in which we are, we are trying to, to use that virtual space so that young people can get, um, you know, can get information, get involved, they can participate, they can produce, that, that sort mm -hmm. of a thing, yeah. Uh, now, this would be a little bit of a controversial topic. Mm -hmm. I know um, under COVID, you would have an increase in maybe gender-based violence. But what about um, youth, uh, like child abuse? Is that something you all would address? Um, is it, a, is it a, an issue? What I know in um, some meetings we've participated, we, we know that there has been um, an increase in teenage pregnancy during mm -hmm. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the only, I, I suspect, the presenter was speaking from mm -hmm. a, a, a position of knowledge right. and position of facts. So okay. that's all that we um, that we know. And we've also received um, data from UNICEF, kind of big organizations that speak to um, young people facing more more um, violence um, because. They, you know, everybody's at home. Everybody's at home during, especially when the thing just, when COVID just hit, everybody was at home in that small space, crowded, you know, no school, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we are still figuring out what it is, um, was going on. So that, the, these organizations have point to um, increase in gender-based violence mm -hmm. um, um, during the pandemic. But we have not collected our own right, data. Right. It's what I have followed on meetings, on conferences, mm -hmm. their data is pointing that, yes, this is happening. Okay, we're, we're coming close to the end of the program, but I also want to speak a little bit about your relationship with the NYC, the National Youth Council. Uh, do, you, mm -hmm. do you work in tandem with them? Oh, yes. Um, we have a very um, cordial working relationship with the National Youth Council. Our... We see, we see them as equal partners mm -hmm. in youth development, and at every turn, we our intention is to um, work alongside with them, collaborate. They are a major stakeholder in mm -hmm. youth development, and so I think we we all relationships can be improved, but um, f I can speak with assurance that we have a very good relationship with the National Youth Council. In fact, coming up will be our National Youth Policy Action Plan mm -hmm. consultation, and they are a major stakeholder in that. So I am proud to say, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> we do have a good relationship, yes. Okay, and uh, the, finally, if the public wish to volunteer or aid your mm -hmm. department in any way, how can they do so? Um, so um, many times there is a call for young people to get involved in groups, got, get involved in organizations. We've had a lot of vibrant groups that have now become dormant because we don't have the continued leadership. And so I want to encourage young people to get involved in their groups. I know the Youth and Sports Council, sometimes they struggle to get people to be a part, um, to be a part of the executive. And we know that there are lots of young people who are capable in joining and, and adding their, their, their leadership skills to ensure that it is, it is governed properly and that mm -hmm. it meets the needs of, um, of young people. As well, there are certain times of the year during Youth Month 
you know, we, we call on volunteers to help us in committees and help us to um, um, uh, execute certain programs that we had. So sometimes mm -hmm. it is based on what is happening. Mm -hmm. But the call for volunteerism now is really to, for young people to get engaged, participate. Because through that, you get the empowerment. And through that, you see your community through different eyes and what you can do mm -hmm. in order to, to, to help your community become better. So well, get involved. OK, thank you for mm -hmm. that. And we've come to the end of our program. I want to thank you very much <laughs> for, for coming on to our program and discussing your ro department's role and the, all the issues affecting youth, including COVID and everything we've spoken about in the last half hour. So thank you very much. I hope to have you on the program again oh, soon. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Compton, yes. Mr. Hingston Compton. Thank you very much. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Jacques Hingston Compton. And you can watch this program as well as all our other government information service content on NTN, as well as our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Thank you for watching.